O-Block is known to be one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in Chicago and even ranks one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in the United States. Birthing rappers like Lil Durk, King Vaughn, and Chief Keef. Even though Parkway Gardens birthed a lot of great people, it also has a truly dark and unique story with having over 19 people shot on one block throughout a four year span. This is Top Trend TV, and this is the dark and crazy story of Parkway Gardens, aka O Block. Chicago's largest public housing project. 28 buildings, 16 floors each, more than 20,000 certified residents, poor people stacked on top of one another. Their problems multiplied, intensified. You carry your children downstairs and they play, and you never know what's going to happen. You know, you be sitting down there playing one minute, and whenever the fellas get into a rage and want to start shooting or, you know, a little scaffold come between them. You have to run, and it's, you can't run to the elevator because who gonna wait for the elevator when somebody's shooting? Parkway Gardens, aka O Block, has a really dark past, but it wasn't always gangbanging and shootouts in Parkway Gardens because before the apartment complex was even built, it was a huge amusement park that was constructed May 1905 and closed 1950. And this amusement park was claimed to be one of the most largest parks of its type in the United States at its time. It contributed to Chicago's status as the city of the most amusement parks in the United States until 1908. But in 1933, the park was closed due to a loss of revenue in the Great Depression years. The Chicago Housing Authority purchased this land in 1946 in order to build a public housing complex that they would call Parkway Gardens. And by 1950, construction would begin, which was completed in 1955. Parkway Gardens Homes was the first housing complex in Chicago that was owned and operated by middle-class black professionals. The 13-acre complex offered quality affordable housing during an era where discrimination was prominent. And this was in the era where Chicago would build multiple apartment complexes around the city for low-income people. Cabrini Green, Robert Taylor Home, Stateway Gardens. These were nationally known as symbols of what can go wrong, symbols of poverty, symbols of blight. When I first came to Greeny, I saw opportunity. And for a long time, there was amazing. Uh, there was an amazing social network here. It's my playground because I play in it, I stay in it, and I live in it, and it's home to me. And it's precious from right here. <laughs> I love Cabrini. But this low income living brought a lot of gang members around the area and the gangster disciples and black disciples became the main dominant forces in these projects. In Chicago, 29 young persons have been killed in youth gang murders since January 1st. One gang, the Blackstone Rangers, is said to be responsible for nearly half of those killings. ABC's Hugh Hill takes a look at the violence there in this special report from Chicago. This is the heart of Woodlawn on Chicago's south side. In this sprawling black neighborhood, street gangs have developed into a powerful force. These are the Blackstone Rangers with their red berets. Their marks of identification are everywhere. They make claim to their turf and control it with violence and bloodshed. The young man I'm talking to is a victim of gang shooting. We've concealed his identity for his own safety. But why do you leave this kind of a life? I mean, why do you have to shoot each other all the time? Well, see, it's, well, in a black neighborhood, the people there, they want to be leaders and, you know, like, we don't have no black president. Then, between 1989 and 1991, their relations citywide became worse as they launched into a full-scale warfare. Meet the vice lords. We got 50-shot max this small. We got Tex. We got 30-30s. 
We got Uzi's. We Just one of the many heavily armed street gangs in Chicago. Hey, we hunt whoever trying to hunt us. That's how it right. is. The gang survivors. Right. You hunting people. Right. Anybody who trying to come through our building. The one us go down. They going right. down the too. one us go down. Anybody got to go. Chicago had one of the strictest gun laws in the country, but that didn't begin to slow up the gang. It's easy to get a gun anytime you want. My whole family own a gun except for me, but I can get a gun anytime I want. Oh, you got a gun now? Well, show it to us. Okay, now. Okay, now what is that? It's 25 automatic. 25 automatic? Yeah. And since the 1960s, there's been over 40,000 murders in Chicago. Throughout the 1990s, Randolph Towers, better known as the Cullerman Apartments, 144 apartments spread across 16 buildings. In the 6200 block of South Cullerman, it was the hub of operations for the Black Disciples until 2007 as part of the Chicago Housing Authority's plan for transformation. And by 2009, Chicago started to tear down these apartment complexes due to high crime and gang violence activity. And this was in efforts of mixing low-income people with higher income people in efforts to stop the gangs and violence. So you had people that was assisted by the government living right next to working class people. Even though Chicago thought that this would make things better, it actually made things worse with murders going up over time. And with BDs flipping the GDs and GDs flipping the BDs, it created a lot more tension and backdooring in these gangs. How Old Block even got his name was from a guy named Odie Perry, who died around August of 2011. And this guy was a well-loved BD member. And his suspected killer was a girl of the name of K.I., which I have a story about her on my page in the King Vaughn's video. One of the first people that O Block had lost was a guy of the name of Platoon, who died on October 18th, 2011. Platoon was shot while he was walking with his girlfriend near 63rd Street and King Drive. When two suspects wearing dark clothing approached and shot Platoon, afterwards Platoon ran and collapsed in one of the O Block apartment complex lobbies. Platoon was only 20 years old at the age of his death, and even though he doesn't get shouted out too much, he was still a well-loved Old Block member. Another well-loved Old Block member that lost his life only two months after Platoon, and his name was Lil Steve, December 4th, 2011. At around 5.50 p.m., McGee was walking in the 600 block of South Prairie Avenue, only about three blocks away from his home, when a man passing by on a bicycle warned that guys with guns had gathered in a nearby alley, police said. Then, one or two men emerged from the alley and opened fire on McGee, striking him in the head and torso, police said. McGee was rushed to Strogo Hospital, where he was later pronounced dead. McGee just turned 17 six days before he died, and this guy was a well-loved old block member, and even gets shouted out by rappers like Rondo No. 9 and Chief Keef. The next old block member to lose their life was also really close to Rondo number no. nine, and his name was LA Capone. September 26, 2013, Sakhi Hardy Jordan, 17, and Michael Mays, 21 years of age, was waiting in the alley on the 700 block of South Stony Avenue. Waiting outside of the recording studio that Leonard Anderson, aka LA Capone, was recording at at the time. The two had an ongoing dispute with Anderson, who was a rival gang member. Hardy Johnson and Mays approached Anderson as he exited the studio from the rear and went down the alley. He was then shot twice. Anderson, aka Alec Capone, was pronounced dead at Northwestern Memorial Hospital around 9.30 p.m. Hardy and Mays was then arrested about a year later for this murder, and when they was questioned, both of them admitted that they learned that Anderson was at the studio and they planned to shoot him there. They was both charged with first degree murder and sentenced to 45 years in jail. Ali Capone was also a rapper that was coming up and had a lot of buzz in the city and around the world. Another well-loved old block member that used to put in a lot of work and was speculated to have a lot of bodies. He was also King Vaughn's best friend. His name was Big A, December 4th, 2016, 3.10 a.m. Antron Young had been shot in the face around this time while he was standing inside a restaurant on the 6300 block of South King Drive. Officers found Young after responding to a call 
of shots fired in the area. Big A was pronounced dead on the scene. Big A was speculated to be involved in a lot of hits. He was speculated to be involved in a hit with King Vaughn against K.I. And around this time, Parkway Gardens was known to be the most dangerous block in Chicago, with having over 19 people shot throughout 2011 to 2014, with two people losing their life from King Drive and 65th Street to King Drive and 64th Street. In only a four year period, all of this violence was committed. But on May 31st, 2014, Old Block would lose a member that would directly impact Lil Dirt, King Vaughn, and Chief Heath. It mostly impacted Lil Dirt because he was the closest to him, and his name was OTF Nunu. It was speculated that 051 Melly had committed this murder. And I have a crazy story about 051 Melly on my page, and it has the whole report on that. So make sure you go check that out. But on June 8th, 2021, Lil Dirk would really lose somebody that was really, really close to him. And that was his brother D Thang. About 12:20 p.m. on a Sunday night, Dante Banks Jr., 32 years of age, was shot in the head outside of a strip club in the 1700 block of South Halstead. Dante Banks was dead on the scene. He was the brother of Lil Dirk, but his suspected killers, Jeremy Hawkins, 33 years of age, and Jalen Anderson, 20 years of age, were shot only three days after D Thing was killed, and they were shot to death at a gas station in the 6100 block of South Ashland, a West Anglewood neighborhood. But it's only speculated that they're really his killers. But even though O Block has lost a lot of great people, O Block has also birthed a lot of great people, like Lil Dirk himself, Chief Keith. King Vaughn and many more upcoming artists are from Old Block too. Even the former first lady Michelle Obama was from Parkway Gardens. But that'll be about it for Parkway Gardens, aka Old Block. Make sure you like or dislike, comment, and subscribe, and let me know down in the comments who y'all want to see next. And as always, stay blessed and stay well. Yeah, yeah, I'm out.